right, welcome on in guys, friends, ladies, anybody out there, anybody new to the channel. My name is Dan C. Bearded. My subscribers and friends call me the trusted teacher for all things beard related. And I have the honor to be joined by Josh Coburn today. What's up? Going on, Josh? Today's video is going to be very directly related to a beard that is new to beard products. And this is very specific because if you want to find out new information on products out there, there's tons of videos about new beards. But there's a lot of guys that have a beard but are new to taking care of it. And would you throw yourself in that category? Uh, yeah, absolutely in that category. Okay. And so we want to help those people out because taking care of a brand new beard that is short is much different than taking care of an established beard that maybe just hadn't used products before or really looked at the, that side of the, the beard game. So this is going to be for you out there that has a beard that wants to try to take care of it for the first time. We're going to go step by step. We're going to get some perspective from that established beard, new to the beard game, and then some established thoughts from myself. So if you want to learn more about that, guys, just stay tuned. We'll hit you with all that information. To start off, I want to do a quick introduction here. Uh, you guys know me or check out the videos. If not, just know I like beards. I'm a teacher. But Josh, if you were in an elevator going to about floor 12, you're on floor one right now, and there's someone that is generally interested in what you do, and you were to give your elevator pitch of what you do for a living and for life, what would you tell somebody with about a 12 floor ride? Um... I guess short and sweet, uh, author, speaker, uh, social media uh, mentor, and uh, businessman, and uh, bearded gentleman that changes lives, <laughs> straight up. And they're like, all right, what are we going to do for these other 10 floors? That's amazing. I <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. Yeah, just I would say just an overall uh, motivating, inspiring person that just wants to help people. Right, absolutely. That would yeah. be a huge part of it. And we met through a couple crazy circumstances. We have a pretty good long video where it's uh, titled, Who is Joshua Coburn? So check that one out and you can learn all about him, but also how we got to meet each other and become quick friends and lifelong friends from there. So... He has this beard, had different stages of the beard. You had shaved it off before, right. had grown it back. He felt like he had kind of lost his superpower when he got rid of the beard. And now he's interested in taking care of the beard. And he also has some different uh, conditions or issues with your skin. Right. Do you want to touch on that real quick just so the people have a little bit of background? Because I'm sure there are people that can relate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, you'll notice that my face even at this moment is a little red. I tend to have rosacea on my face. It's a... a uh, family history issue, uh, something that you know, my, my brother, my grandfather, uh, my dad, everybody's kind of dealt with it. And uh, I'm told I'm at the tail end of it, but okay. still present. Okay, so it kind of goes away as you progress uh, through life? Apparently Interesting. so. Okay. Um, it should be noted that that's from uh, older gentlemen who were shaving regularly. Ah. They were not bearded. Interesting. So my brother is bearded, and uh, I'm also bearded, and we both still wrestle with it. So I don't know. Interesting. If there's something with, yeah, the shaving cream and aftershave and, and uh, tension on the face, could be. Right. Interesting. I'm not sure. And so... One of the ways it manifests itself is with having that redder skin complexion, mm -hmm. but also you have some dry skin and flaking that occurs, especially in the, the bearded area, right? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh -huh. Especially if uh, like I'm traveling and out in a desert somewhere, you know, big flakes, sore patches on okay. my skin, stuff like that. Okay. Absolutely. And so in our last video, we were really at ground zero. He had nothing that he had been using on his beard whatsoever other than like head hair shampoo and uh, didn't you say even lotion at one point? Uh, yeah, I would rub like uh, lotion in to get it. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's all right. He said lotion, you guys. So we pitched some ideas. 
he has had a couple companies reach out to him and send him products. Um, he's not working with any companies at this time. Um, I definitely am encouraging him to explore that option just because I know what value he has to helping people out there. So that's something that maybe you'll be hearing about uh, once the time is right and the company is right. So he's tried a few things from a couple different companies, um, but I think kind of the general consensus is a lot of what you guys have experienced. And that is there's so many different names and there's so many different products and you don't know what to use, when to use it, how to use it. And we wanna kinda of clarify that today and give you the basics for taking care of a beard really for the first time and doing it right. Sound about right? Yep, definitely. Perfect. So we'll get some feedback from what Josh has kinda of dabbled with and then we'll give you the, the real instructions there. So the first thing is a base and the, the companies that we're gonna to show today are companies that have reached out to him and sent him products. So I just wanted to match products that he has tried or at least seen or is comfortable with with the, the verbiage. So the first thing you want to do is in the shower is get a beard wash. A beard wash is extremely important. Uh, one that we'll show today is uh, Beard Octane's LCW and this is a lather conditioning wash but it is more on the washing side than a conditioning side um, but it's not a heavy stripping wash which is a good thing. So this one I know you've received, but you have not used yet. Is that correct? Correct. I haven't jumped into that just yet. Perfect. Not. So a beard wash. A beard wash is in the shower, something that you are going to wash your beard with. A couple key points here, and I've really, really been strict on this lately in pushing this, is there has been this notion that you should not wash your beard more than once or twice a week. It's going to dry it out. It's going to strip it. My big thing is wash your beard when you need it. If you sweat every day heavily, wash your beard. If you get dirt, grime, dust in it, wash your beard. Your beard is no different than the rest of your body, right? If you get dirty and your head hair gets all sweaty and stuff, you should wash your head hair. If your legs and so on, the beard is no different. You don't want to, to have to forego that. So wash your beard when you need it. If you have a pretty modest, light lifestyle, looking at two to three times a week would be a good time to wash your beard. And the way to use it is no different than your head hair shampoo. And not that you would know about that. I'm, I'm sorry. Right, but right. No, we're, we're good. Not, not a lot of hair up there <laughs> right now. So, But the, the head hair shampoo, it's the same thing. Put it in your hand, lather it up. A little bit goes a long way. Work it into your skin. Really get those fingertips in there. If you've ever had a shower uh, shampoo brush, that will really help too. Have you ever tried any of those? I never have, huh? So for me, they can do a good job, but I have a really thick and dense beard. So sometimes my beard will kind of like laugh at those like silicone teeth, like ah, you think you're getting through here, you're funny. Uh, but anything you can use to get to the skin is gonna really help out there. So step one is wash your beard, really, really simple. And we're gonna probably have a follow-up video as Josh really starts to implement these steps and we can get uh, the real easy break it down steps here. And I'll probably put that in the description for you guys and we'll hear back from him on, on what he thinks there. For sure. So beard wash number one. All right, a second thing that we're gonna look for is a beard conditioner. And I thought I grabbed a beard conditioner here, but it is the wash version. Um, but another company that he has dabbled with because they had sent him stuff out was Fable Beard Co. And Fable Beard Co. has a beard wash like you see here, um, but they also have a beard conditioner. So a conditioner can be used in two ways. You can co-wash your beard, which means you solo use conditioner and not beard wash. And that's gonna have a little bit of the washing characteristics, but a lot of the conditioning ones. Or you can have a beard wash and follow it up with a beard conditioner, and that's gonna leave it nice and refreshed afterwards. One tale of caution there is do not over condition your beard. I actually just made a video dedicated to that uh, because people were using conditioner every day and that's not a good thing. You wanna let your beard breathe a little bit and, uh, and, and you wanna have the impact, you wanna have the benefits, but not overdo it. So to be clear, yes. Um, if you live a lighter lifestyle, only a couple times a week yep. with the shampoo, Shampoo? Is that what is beard that? Beard wash. Beard wash. Beard wash. Terminology. Yes. Okay. So with the beard wash. Yep. But that doesn't mean every time you're showering, condition it. Perfect. I would have absolutely done that. Yeah. Some days you are 100% going to want to wash your beard and not follow it up with a conditioner. 
Our beard oils that we'll get to in a second have conditioning agents oh, to them okay. um, that are going to fill that, that void in. If you were just to wash it and then go out of the shower, kind of like your head hair, that would be a problem. But we are applying that oil afterwards. Got it. And when you do that, just a wash, it lets your beard breathe. It lets the sebum oil, which is the natural oil from your skin, kind of come back and fight for itself. Um, if you over condition it, your beard and your skin get used to that. And they say, oh, I don't have to supply this natural amazingness. I'm going to take a back seat, right? It's just like anything else. Too much of drugs, you have those natural things in your body that want to give you those great feelings. And if you use too many drugs, your body's going to say, hey, I guess we don't need to produce these anymore. So do not over condition your beard. A lot of guys do. They have that same kind of thought. If I use wash, I got to use conditioner. Absolutely not. Right. So great question. All right. So check, check there. That's kind of in the shower. A next big thing that I really, really, really want to preach to someone, especially if they have dry skin or they have itchy skin, and that is exfoliating your beard. You can do that in a gentle way in the shower by using your fingertips. You can use that shampoo, shampoo brush or, uh, in there. But I highly recommend getting a good, strong comb and really getting it into your skin in the shower, but also after the shower. Now, this is really the main comb that I use, and I know it's one that you've had, and we'll hear from you in a second here, um, and that is an oxhorn comb. So my favorite one is the Beard Octane oxhorn comb. I've used lots of oxhorn combs, and they're all good. The Beard Octane one just is a little bit smoother and glides through my beard a little bit better. I don't know what it is, uh, but it's my favorite one. So when you are out of the shower, before you use any products, towel dry your beard. So you get out, towel dry your beard. For me, I like to go about 90% dry. Then you're going to get an oxhorn comb and really get into your skin, kind of rake it through there, really open up those pores, get any buildup out of there. And that's going to really, really help generate blood flow to the skin, which promotes better growth on the hair. So really, really get in there. With an oxhorn comb, have you used it yet? Uh, yes, I have. Okay. Absolutely. Thoughts? Well, first, let me Questions? say. Questions? Yeah, first. Perfect. I was, I've always been told, don't comb your beard because you're going to lose... Uh, a lot of hair through like pulling it out or whatever. Is that true? Is that not true? Does it depend, depend on how you use it? Yes, definitely. Do not comb your beard dry. Do not comb your beard dry. If okay. you do that, you're likely going to get snags. Okay. Do not comb your beard with a cheap comb. For example, if you cut your hair with like wall trimmers or anything, they always come with those flimsy black combs. Right. Those are not good combs because they are stamp pressed. Essentially, they get put in a mold, it presses down, and they're left with a seam and imperfection and spurs in the middle of them. Those grab your hair. Like an oxhorn comb, this is hand polished. Another good comb out there is called a Kent comb, which is a plastic comb, but they hand polish it. Okay. So that's gonna be really good. So combing while dry is bad. Combing with a cheap comb is bad. When your beard is wet or has products in it, it is a must. You really, really need to do that to exfoliate your skin underneath the beard, but also work out any kinks and everything going. Are you going to lose hair? Yes. I have another video dedicated to that. There are two types of hair loss. There is shedding and there is breakage. Shedding is the natural course of your bearded life. When you comb your hair, you're likely going to lose some hair. Whether it's your wife at home, whether it's your beard in the, in the sink, you're gonna lose those hairs. What you wanna look for is if you grab that hair, it's gonna have a white bulb at the end. If you have that white bulb, you are good to go. That is the healthy part. Your hair has ran its natural course and you're good to go. Don't freak out. And on average per day, a bearded man with our, our length of beard should be losing about 10 to 15 hairs. Um, some people are very lucky and it's less. Some people have natural loss up to 20, 30 hairs. Wow. And that's not a problem. It's just what happens. Does combing spread that, uh, speed that up? Not really. If it's going to go, it's going to go at some point anyway. And you're just getting that out because all hair is dead. Right. Anyway, we got to keep that in mind. And you want to let the, the dead hair go through its natural cycle. So, yeah, phenomenal question. You're going to lose hair, but if you're doing it the right way, it's not a bad thing. Well, to, to answer your question, have I had experience with it? Yes. Okay. But I'm learning inappropriately because I would do it when dry. Oh, yeah. I would yeah. finish everything that I normally okay. would do, and then I would comb it. Just because I'm like, okay, you know, I mean, you finish up, you're kind of yeah, yeah, out yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd be like, okay, instead of just pulling this, I just give it, a, give it a comb. Yeah. Well, now, now I'm finding that's maybe not the appropriate Correct. path to take. So, perfect, perfect. So, and I assume I'll, I'll get a little lesson on, on how to maybe uh, structure it a little better 
without using the code at the end here. Absolutely. Okay. And this is why we're doing this video. Uh, there's so many people that just kind of figure it out and common logic is wrong and we've all been there, but if you can learn from a video, Absolutely. why not? So yeah, don't comb it dry. So you got a shower, 90% uh, dry with your beard. Get a comb in there, get it into the skin. You may even see some dead skin coming off in the form of like little white buildup at the end. That's okay. Put it on a towel. As you're getting used to this, it'll be less and less and less. Now, the most important part of beard care regimen and skin regimen by far, if you get anything out of this video, that is using beard oil. Get yourself a good quality beard oil that is going to agree with your skin. Now there are carrier oils and then there are fragrances that can be natural or synthetic. Different carriers do different things and they react differently with skin. Uh, two again that uh, Josh has had experience with is Beard Octane. This is actually my collab scent with them, which is, what did you think of it when you uh, smelled it? Smelled it smelled wonderful. It's uh, uh, the, the ginger. Oh, uh, it's so good. so wonderful. And this video will be dropping the week of the release. The release was actually just happened on Sunday and we'll be dropping this video this week. So yes, the ginger, it's out. It's officially great to talk about. And then another company again is uh, the great fable company that he's had experience with. So you've combed your beard, it's wet. Now you're gonna get the appropriate amount of beard oil in your hand. If you have a dropper top, traditionally, if your beard is about that length, you're gonna be right at a full dropper. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be about the most, uh, Every beard is different. Once again, guys, you gotta figure out what works for you. How do you figure that out? Trial and error. Learn from failure, learn from successes. Uh, but usually about our length of beard, it's gonna be about an, a one dropper amount of beard oil. Get that into your palm, work it into your fingertips, and beard oil is for the skin. It helps the hair, but it's mainly for the skin. So once you get into your fingertips, you're gonna get underneath your beard, any skin that is underneath your beard, including your neck, including your chin, including your cheeks, really work your fingertips into the skin to spread that beard oil out. And then, extremely important, get that comb out again. Ah. And now what we're gonna do is spread that beard oil out evenly through your skin and through the hair. And that is extremely important. When you use your fingers, it's gonna be very selected of where it goes. That comb is gonna help spread it out evenly through the skin and through the hair. Nice. Okay. Definitely not how I was going about it. Okay, and that's good to know. That's good to know. And again, my favorite is the oxhorn comb because the teeth are long, they're very strong, and it's gonna glide through there very nicely. I don't use this for fine styling as much, but I really love it for the exfoliating and for spreading out the products. So super, super unbelievably important here. Now, carrier oils. We can go over a couple quick basics here, not to overload you guys, uh, but some great ones are argan oil, jojoba oil, sweet almond oil, uh, which is my personal favorite, and that's one of the, the major ones in here, is Beard Octane has fractionated coconut oil, argan oil, sweet almond oil. My beard absolutely love those, and my skin. And Fable is similar. They have coconut oil, and then they have castor oil. So castor oil is a thicker oil. Some companies put a lot of castor oil in there, Fable would fall into the medium category, and that is what's gonna make the oil feel a little bit thicker, or lack of castor oil make it feel a little bit thinner, and that's really just personal preference. Uh, so what have your experiences been with, with the beard oil, and we're gonna get him combing it in right and, and all that, but so far, what have you experienced by using beard oil? Um, I, I noticed that my skin is much less dry, because uh, the way I would use it is, is traditionally I'm dry right, you know, right through here, yeah. and generally through here and just below uh, my chin is okay. kind of the gathering place for my dryness. So I would really work it in heavy in those spots and then, you know, just kind of general through yeah. the rest of my face. And the difference is, is really huge That's in, awesome. in terms of that. I mean, it's been, because I would feel it. If I would shower and yeah. not use anything, I would, like, if I would smile for the first couple of hours, I could feel my skin being tight and cracked. Okay. And it, would, it would physically hurt. Yeah. So this has eliminated all of that, which That's is wonderful. That's awesome. And I would say the way you should approach putting the beard oil on would be that exact way awesome. and then go with the comb to spread it out a little bit. Uh, but if you have areas that you see more problems, definitely target those areas. Some people even take the dropper and put it directly on those areas. You can try that out. It's not something that works for me personally, but it doesn't mean it can't work for you. Perfect. So experiment with that, play with that a little bit, but I would do the exact same thing. Just use that comb to spread it out. And this is really gonna help your skin, which is vital for having a healthy beard. And it's gonna smell good, gonna kinda, kinda make it look nice too. So uh, super important there, beard oil, beard oil, gotta have the beard oil. So after that, 
Now we have some options for what products we're gonna use. Uh, for our styling, if a lot of people, if they wanna have a kind of beard style like Joshua's or like mine, it's gonna require heat. So heat, a uh, big saying that I like to have is heat plus tension equals direction. If you are using heat and you're applying tension to whatever direction you're going, that's gonna, that's gonna stay. And so we'll leave that, maybe we'll cover like a whole nother video on styling, uh, but we wanna kinda stay to the basics on this one. So after that, you got a couple more products that, that we have here. One of them is Beard Balm. Beard Balm. Have you, I'm sure you've received Beard Balm? I have. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what it's for? Have you used it at all yet? To me, it's Beard Balm is the biggest mystery. Okay. Um, simply because I see a lot of it. Yeah. Um, and I, balm isn't a super common word like in right. a normal guy's language, right? I'm, I'm thinking that, like, I remember my grandfather mentioning balms for okay. his cracked, gross hands yes, from yes, working on yes. the farms. And, you know, being an electrician and stuff like that, or for like elbows. Yeah. Like that's what it was for. Right. So I'm thinking all purpose. Yeah. Ball. I mean, yeah. where, like, do I, is this for like, is this how I get the, ah, you know, the, okay. the styled the uh, handlebars? Stash? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, is that what it's for? Or is it deeper? Or is it for really damaged areas? These are things I, I have no idea. Perfect. Uh, what I do know is I like the way it feels and okay. I love the way many of them smell. Okay. So, so awesome. that's a win. And I love that because I hope there's people relating that out to like, yes, thank you. I'm not the only one. Beard balm is very simple. It is part nourishment for your beard and your skin, and it's part for styling. So what you would do with beard balm is you would take a little finger amount, probably about, I call it a dollop, so just the top of your finger, work it into your palm. You're going to emulsify it, which is just a fancy word for saying make it into a liquid or make it into an oil. And then you are going to apply it to your beard. I go with the outside method where you're going to go and just kind of make a shield around the outside. Some guys like to work it in between and throughout their beard. Either way is fine. Uh, when I do that, it makes my beard clump together and seem thinner, and I don't want that. And so you're just going to style it. So will it give you that handlebar mustache? Some of them are pretty thick. It depends on the level of wax in there. Um, but what you're looking for is probably gonna be a mustache wax. Uh, so they make specific targeted ones so you can get that, get that little, uh, right, that little right. handlebar up there. So a balm is to give you style, but also give you a little bit of nourishment for the skin and hair and a little boost on set. Give you a little bit of, of that pop on the outer layer there. Got it. So styling at your length of beard, I know this is crazy. I work with companies. I love all these great products. I do not recommend you using Beard Balm. Really? Yes. I have another video dedicated to saying I only use beard oil during the day. That is uh -huh. it. I style my beard with the, the, style, the steps that we went through. Beard Balm is really more ideal for shorter beards that are yeah. going through the awkward phase where their beards are kind of puffing out. We have the benefit of length and gravity. Gravity helps our style. I like the ability for my beard to, to shake and go through and move. Beard balm kind of contains that. Uh, gotcha. And one big benefit to not using beard balm is let's say a gust of wind poof, comes through and smacks the beard, your beard's gonna go right back into place. If a wind comes through and smacks a beard with beard balm, it's gonna stay out here. <laughs> and so right. I do not recommend you using beard balm. With that said, it is amazing on your elbows. It is amazing on your, your knuckles. Perfect. Any beard product that you use, oil, balm, or butter, which we'll get to next, you can absolutely put it everywhere on your body. So I target areas where I get dry skin, my elbows, my knuckles, randomly my love handles get dry. Oh, so I don't know if they're just out there so far, they're just catching all the, the dryness, <laughs> I'm not sure, but I put them on my love handles. Perfect. And uh, so they can go anywhere. Beard butter's amazing on your body. So nice. beard balm, I don't recommend it for a long beard, but if you would like it, do you. It's an awesome product, but styling and a little bit of nourishment. Now the other one is beard butter. Have you received some beard butter? Uh, I have, yes. Okay, so this is a uh, beard butter that was from a live stream special, and uh, this is from Beard Octane there. It's DJ Silky Dan, if you don't know, uh, join us on Monday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern, you'll figure it out. It's a crazy story we can't get into right now. But beard butter is pure nourishment. This is solely for the health of your beard and has no hold value to it. Um, there are some beard butters that flirt with a little bit of hold, but really it is for nourishment. For me, I use beard butter as my nighttime routine. Before I go to bed, without taking a shower, without doing anything, I had that oil in on my skin and beard throughout the day, 
I'm going to apply beard butter every single night before I go to bed. Wow. And what that's going to do is a butter has a better sealing value than oil. Oil is going to absorb really, really well, but butter is going to seal that hair. And why it's important to seal your hair at night is during the day, I'm drinking a gallon of water. And so I'm getting that nourishment from within. At night, I'm going to go six to eight hours without consuming any water. So I want to trap all of that hydration I have in my hair. And a beard butter is going to do that in a great way. Perfect. So apply that beard butter at night. And you're going to want to apply beard butter uh, like you apply beard oil. Okay. So get some on your hand, emulsify, work it all through the skin, all through the beard, get it in there, and then have that amazing smell. I like more relaxing beard butter smells at night, citrus, lavender, uh, floral, those kind of things make it make me relax and help me sleep. Nice. I like that. Yeah. And it's extremely important what it smells like for my wife. I have some that I like and Sam doesn't like them. She smells my beard products really two main times in the bathroom in the morning after I've gotten ready, and then at night when I lay down next to her. So that beard butter scent is really important if you're gonna be laying next to a significant other at night. So Nicole. something to consider there. So uh, when it comes to, to the butter, yes. when you wake up in the morning, what does that leave behind? I mean, is your beard all like stuck like this? Um, it can or, be, okay. yeah. My okay. beard, if, if I am a morning shower person, right. by way of beard. I have to style my beard in the morning, otherwise it's just gonna be crazy. Shorter beards can usually get away with it, uh, but for me, I, I need to style my beard in the morning by taking a shower and going through that process because yeah, I'll, I'll be honest, there's no product that I've found that's gonna allow me to wake up and be like, oh, hashtag woke up like this. Um, it's just, it's not gonna work. Right. So are you Got a it. morning shower person? Uh, I, I'm a, it, it all depends on what my travel schedule is, what my life schedule is. So, okay. you know, that's that's why I ask specifically, okay. because if I'm, you know, getting up and hitting the gym directly, sometimes the gym is, you know, yeah. in my hotel. Right. Sometimes I'm traveling across town to the gym. Okay. Nobody wants to look like crap in the gym. Okay. But nobody wants to shower before the gym and right. after the gym, right? Right, 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 or, right. Or do I? Yeah. And what's the harm in my beard if so, I were to do that? You're talking yeah. two hours apart. Double-edged sword here. If you do not use beard butter at night, your beard is likely going to dry up pretty quickly and it's going to look better in the morning. Right? right, a dry beard is not going to, uh, it's not gonna be stuck in a certain way because it's just Got gonna it. be stick dry. So you'll be able to get it going, but it's not gonna be as healthy. Got it. So the health benefit outweighs that styling benefit for me. Perfect. That would be a big one. Um, if you are going to the gym, highly recommend not showering before the gym. Right. Go sweat, go get all the stuff out into your pores, and then shower after the gym. Perfect. And that's gonna be big. Um, and it may not look the best at the gym, so I know that feeling, and right. I know you're talking about there, um, but that's one of those things where it's form over function. I want right. to kind of make it work rather than look the best for that short period sure. for at the gym. So Got big it. one, extremely recommend beard butter at night. This was one of the major game changers for me. Absolute game changer, beard butter at night. Have you experienced beard butter at night yet? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, once or twice, and I'll tell you. Uh, I mentioned earlier the, yeah. the the smiling and things like yeah. that post shower that would happen overnight as well. Yeah. My face is generally the same. Yeah. And this helped quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, but that was skin related. Okay. Beard wise, uh, I assume because I haven't used it regularly over time, I haven't seen like texturally, it feels roughly the same. Perfect. But I, I would imagine that o over that time, yeah. I'm gonna start noticing a little more Good. lighter. Well, you know, less less texture maybe Good. is a better way to put it. And I love that. I love hearing the the real honest answers there, right? We don't want to hear, oh yeah, it's a, it's miraculous. That's that's awesome to hear, yeah. and it'll be interesting to see what happens as you use it more consistently in that in that manner. And then the last thing we're going to talk about for a beard that is new to taking care of them is going to be a really important tool, and this is a boar's hair bristle brush. And they have different variations of this. If you're not into animal uh, hair or anything like that, they have cactus bristle brush. Um, there's companies that actually use cactus bristles and they're phenomenal, really, really great. So a boar's hair bristle brush, this was one thing before we started filming here that you brought up. You didn't know the name right off the top right. of your head. You, you knew it was something animal in there. Right. So you do have a boar's hair bristle brush. I do. Thoughts on this, God, this uh, one? And my favorite, the only one I, I really use is again from Beard Octane. It's got these nice grooves on the side. And one thing that I love, you're gonna find some that are gonna be concave, convex. You're gonna find some that are flat. This one has 
pretty much flat, but with a little bit of a bump to it. And I love it, love it, love it. Beard Octane's one. Thoughts on it? Uh, that's the exact one that I use. And I don't know of the benefits other than, damn, it feels real good. <laughs> and it, I mean, it just feels, I, I can't explain it. Yeah. It feels wonderful. Yes. Like, it's like I'm being, it's like I'm a cat and I'm being pet. Oh my gosh. It's wonderful. And it's true. And it's, I've said this on my channel many times. My, my beard routine is like my therapy. It's my time to myself. You get a little bit of self-care, self-love, and it's it's powerful mentally, I think. And that's part of it, right? It feels Absolutely, good. It's, yeah. it's enjoyable. So the Boris Hair Bristle Brush is twofold. One, if especially if you have a shorter beard, it's good for exfoliating. Gets in the skin there, activates the pores a little bit. But once you get to be about our length, it has one main purpose, and that is for your finishing style. So we went through, we put in the beard oil, we waited, we applied some heat to it to get our general style that we wanted with combing. Now we're gonna finish it off with this um, boar's hair bristle brush. And all you're gonna do is let the brush do the work. That's one of my biggest pieces of advice for guys that are new to taking care of their beard is they wanna go in and push this brush really hard into their skin. And what that does is it's really good where you have face and where you have a chin, but the second you get below that, if you're pushing in hard and you're going down, once you get away from the chin, you're going to be pushing your beard in. And what happens is you start to develop these waves right along the edge of your chin because you're pushing that, ha that hair in and you're developing a bad habit. So let the brush do the work. It's amazing what this can do. And the effect that I call it is almost like a Velcro effect. It's taking these, these bristles and it's taking your hairs and kind of binding them together and making this awesome style finish at the end. And yeah, again, it's just a wonderful feeling. It's a, like an invigorating feeling that just, it, it, yeah, it's kind of like a cat when they, ooh, when they yeah, get the, the exactly. petting going on. So, exactly. Um, in what way were you using uh, it? That, that's that? exactly the way I was using it. It just seemed to make sense. So, and it does, right? A, a brush is a brush. I right. mean, we don't have to get right. too crazy and, yeah, with that one. The, the big thing is, too, and I don't know, I can't really tell, but, I mean, my, my beard is generally unkempt in terms of all of this. But, like, I struggle with these kind of flaring okay. out here. Yeah. And I, like, yours are trimmed a bit more. Mine are, mine are uh, you know, super, I mean, that's all the way from up here, you know, so. Yeah. So, you know, often it's over my shoulder <laughs> or whatever, you know. And that, I've found, does help yes. kind of keep that in line a bit more. A hundred percent. All right, we're back. Sorry, we reached our recording limit of fun, but we're back on the, the second part here. We won't hold you guys for too long. If you've stayed through this part of the video, thank you guys. Uh, it, we really appreciate it, and hopefully we're helping some people out there. Uh, but yeah, the boar's hair brush kind of go down, I say, to like the ponytail method, where I go down to the middle. Uh, one thing, question, do you experience a fork at all? Uh, guys that get longer, the, the center of their beard tends to fork out. Um, strangely enough, it's it tends to be right here. Interesting. On both sides. Like, I mean, I don't know if it's how natural it is on, on screen, but like if, if I overuse yeah. oil... I, I start to see that. It's this okay. becomes something and this is like a thing. Interesting. And that's what happens to me. So it's it's much less here and Interesting. more more like right right in these areas. Okay. And and the reason I can go right there is because that's just I mean, I don't know why. It just seems to be the case every huh. time. So I'm constantly pushing all that together. Interesting. Yeah. Most guys have it right in the middle and it forks out because uh. of the growth pattern around their Adam's apple. Um, so yours has something to do with around that lip region. Yeah, so because like mentioning the Adam's apple, yeah. like mine's not, uh, my hair oddly stops right at that. So okay. it doesn't split quite as much. Yeah. And so. I bet yours is, yeah, pretty straight across. So yeah, that's, pretty. that's pretty good there. So yes, a hundred percent use that to bring your style together. And the more you use it, the more consistent you stay with it, the more those hairs are going to become trained and they're going to do it more and more on their own. Right. So you'll find yourself relying less and less on using products like Hold from Balm. That's why I say when we get the benefit of length and gravity, our beard is generally going to want to do what we teach it to do. Right. So that's a, a big thing there. So yeah, awesome. Quick run through and then we'll get a little final recap here. In the shower, use a beard wash. On occasion, follow it with a beard conditioner. Out of the shower, you're going to want to exfoliate with a comb. I prefer an oxhorn comb. Towel dry, most important step of them all. Apply beard oil to the skin. Make sure it absorbs. Here's a good, a good tip for testing of how much beard oil you've used, if it's too much or too little. If your beard feels dry, it's probably too little. If you apply beard oil and 10 minutes later, run your hand through your, your beard, if it feels like you have your hands covered in oil, you've used too much. 
So 10 minutes is about the limit where your beard and skin should absorb that oil. So if you find yourself, another common thing is guys will say, hey, it's ruining my collars. I'm getting too much product on my collars and my shirts. You've used too much. So you, you can kind of test yourself there and you're like, oh, you go pick up your phone and it's just a grease slab across it. <laughs> that day you used a little bit too much, try to scale back a bit and check the next day. And seasons can have something to do with that too. Uh, the drier the season, a lot of people use more product uh, and it gets more humid, they use a little bit less product. So it really depends on uh, the season as well. So have you have you experienced using too much? Uh, I've definitely used too much. Um, to your point, like uh, an entire dropper is just a smidge too much. I'm, I'm okay. just below that. Perfect. And that tends to work, uh, work out well. It, you know, I can't say that that will or will not be the case now that I have, will have a slightly different regimen since we've had this discussion. Yeah, but. and that could be because it's that amount is targeted in one or two specific areas. Right, and yeah. if you spread it out, maybe, but maybe that's just where it's at. Because every beard is different. Um, it's called porosity. Your, your hairs have holes in them and how they absorb is uh, different. Some hairs can float in water, some are heavy and sink in water. So it depends on the porosity of your beard. So that'll be interesting. I can't wait to get the update on after you're spreading it out with the comb, where that will go. Absolutely. Um, so beard oil in there, don't don't use too much. You're again going to use the comb to spread it out evenly. After that point, if you want a little bit of styling, you could use a beard balm. Finish your styling with a boar's hair bristle brush. And then at night, extremely important, throw some beard butter in before bed. And that's going to really, really help keep that beard seal the hydration in overnight. Um, misconception with beard products is people will say it hydrates your beard and your skin. That's not true. The only thing that can hydrate is water. All of these products are oil-based. Oil and water do not mix. Oil does not hydrate, but it can seal in the hydration. It can nourish your skin and really help that out. Um, but you're not going to get any hydration from the outside. The only way you can do that is by drinking water from the inside. So that's a, one of the biggest tips I can ever give to people that are new to taking care of their beard and wanting to experience real impact on their beard. Drink your water. Got to drink water. Yeah, I like that. How's your water consumption? Uh, generally very good. Okay. Yeah. Usually people that are associated with the gym and taking care of their body know the value of water, um, even at the molecular level for workouts and what that can do for right. you. So um, that's huge. I'm, I'm a pure water guy in the morning. I don't drink coffee. I've never had coffee in my life. I don't have caffeine in the morning. I have a big Bubba keg that I go into work teaching with and, and it's water. And everybody's like, oh man, that's a lot of coffee. I'm like, no, it's just cold water. <laughs> so I, I drink water. What about cold Room temperature, where you got your water at? Uh, Ice? I, I, I prefer super cold. Okay, right? same, same, same. That said, often in travels, that's not available. So True. It's, it's, you know, it's whatever the temp is outside. That's and I can stuff. drink it I can drink it faster when it's not so cold, too. Same. So there, there's a trade-off there. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Final thoughts for the people from the, the guy that's jumping into sometimes this overwhelming pool of beard products and names and titles uh, from the journey of not taking care of it at all to dabbling with it and wanting to, but also kind of experiencing and getting a little bit of taste of it. What are your kind of just overall thoughts? Uh, well, it's good to really know what everything's actually used for. So that's good. It also kind of leads me to kind of forward thinking like okay now I think I know how I can finally get this to look like I want yeah all day long without you know high wind low wind you know all those things that affect us so I think this is really going to help not only that um, I'm excited to really approach products from a um, a use and benefits yeah. level instead Huge. of a oh this smells like I think I should smell you know, versus this one doesn't. That's how I would kind of approach it before, only because I didn't know. And so. that's how most people start. My first experience was in Ulta, a beauty store for mainly women. And my wife said, hey, you have a beard. There's beard oil here. It smells great. And I'm like, it does smell great. Let's try it. It was garbage. It didn't do what a beard oil was supposed to, but I started because it smelled good. So that is a huge shift from going from smell to the actual use and, and benefits. And it's cool to hear that because even with just the different ways and, and kind of the logical approaches, maybe not the, the textbook, but you've experienced some of those benefits already. Yeah, definitely. And, and you know what's, what's insane to me with, with all this is like, uh, or, or what tells me about the forethought going into this uh, industry and these products is that I was already naturally using them in a way it was intended, uh, especially, you know, some of the combs and stuff like that, yeah. because 
it just makes sense. Yep. So, you know, logically, it's like you look at it, it's like, okay, well, this is likely used for that. That's a huge deal. I mean, that says a lot of, about the people who are, you know, putting their time and effort behind these products and getting yeah. them out there. Well said. So. Well said. I agree completely. So, he's going to try these with that. There's really not, and this is, this is kind of it. I mean, there's not like crazy levels to this. We're like, all right, we'll report back next time and really get in. It's, it's not a complicated game once you know what the names are and the order and how to use them. So I'm excited to, to hear the, the benefits of your skin first and foremost, Definitely. but then the style, the thought, the, the smell and all that behind it. I think it's going to be really cool to hear about. Yeah, I'm really excited to see kind of where this goes for sure. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, as always, man, absolute pleasure. Anytime I get to pick your brain, talk with you, make content with you, it, it's genuinely an, an honor of mine. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Tons. Awesome. Awesome. Guys, leave questions, comments down below. Um, hit them with your Instagram. I'll put it in the description. Uh, at Joshua Coburn. It's spelled correctly behind me. Hit it. Perfect. Nice and easy one there. Um, if you want a little pick-me-up for the day, get a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of motivation, there's not a better spot there. Um, I'll put a link to his book that's down below. Really good toilet read. Um, quick hitters, I would say, that just give you the, that little burst that a lot of us need and really appreciate. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Cool. So guys, as always, stay bearded and no one better to say it. Stay positive. Right on. Take care, guys. Thank you.